Welcome everyone. I'm Leanne Ireland, Marketing Project Manager here at McNaught McKay Electric Company. And I wanna welcome you to our Industry Expert Exchange on Inventory Management. Every month, a panel of specialists from across our five regions covers a new topic, exploring the latest and greatest technology, developments, and challenges in their focus area. We host these live streams once a month on Thursdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. So you can join us on your lunch break or you can watch the recording afterward. As you join, say hello in the comment section. Let us know where you're joining us from today. I'll have my eye on those comments as we go along. Feel free to ask questions in the comments at any time throughout the session. There's no need to wait for a Q&A portion at the end and we'll answer your questions in real time. Now, if you have a question we can't get to today, or if you're watching this as a recording, you can always reach out to us at macandmaclive at mc-mc.com. That email address is in the description of this video, and I'll repeat it again at the end of our session. This month's topic is inventory management. Before we jump in, let's take a minute to meet our panelists today. I'm going to ask, you all to go to introduce yourselves. We'll go around the screen. If you can give us your name, your area expertise, and where you're joining us from today, that'd be great. Let's start with Shannon. Yeah, I'm Shannon Betts. I'm uh, responsible for our CAP program in the Georgia region. Mark? I'm Mark Graham. I'm responsible for our northern region, which is Ohio and Michigan. I'm the cap manager for that region, and I'm joining you from the lovely state of Michigan today. Randy. I am Randall Langdon. I'm from North Carolina, um, cap supervisor as well, and uh, inventory management in mostly eastern North Carolina. Jason, last but not least. And I'm Jason Weed. I'm the CAP Supervisor for Charleston and Savannah, currently coming from Charleston, South Carolina. Great. Thanks, you guys. So at McNaught McKay, we do inventory management, but we call it our CAP team. Uh, Mark, can you tell us what the CAP team is? I'd be happy to tell you, Leanne, and anybody else who's joining us. So the CAP team stands for the Customer Alliance Program. So under the umbrella of CAP are a couple things, vendor managed inventory, which Leanne mentioned, uh, installed base evaluations, which is a, a product that helps us look at your available inventory, and then repairs. So the vendor managed inventory guys do a lot of repair stuff because they're already in there. And then I have a repair team that does stuff as well. So, you know, I won't bore you with a real long description of vendor managed inventory, but it's just exactly what you would think it would be. You know, we bring people in, we uh, look at your inventory. We help with your mins and maxes. We help consolidate products where you have maybe two vendors of the same thing, which can help reduce costs. We can help reduce POs because we're gonna be on a regular cadence and kind of stop you from having to issue things all the time. Um, one of the things we like to say on the CAP team is we do what you do if you had time to do it. Um, sometimes you just don't. Sometimes that's a simple reorganization or labeling that makes things better. So we just try to provide you with a custom solution that helps you save time, save save money. Um, and we're good at it. We've been doing it for a long time and we are pretty good at vendor managed inventory. So that's kind of a real basic thing. So Mark, I know that one of the hot topics that um, that we're talking about and and helping our customers with is storeroom logics, SRX. What is that exactly? Yeah, excellent question, Leanne. SRX is our new software that we've been developing with storeroom logics as a partner. Um, we have never found, unfortunately, over all the years we've been doing this, a software that we really liked using that allowed us to do what we need to do to do vendor management inventory. And then what the customer might need to do or to what you might need to do. So this is the first time we've had that. So uh, it is a custom solution, just like our cap team, where we kind of create a process that takes the VMI, which is typically invisible to customers, and it makes them visible if you choose to see what's happening. You can see all the transactions, you can do all kinds of stuff, um, and you can also use it to do inventory allocated to jobs. So 
we're going to have another session on that next month. So feel free to join in on that. That's kind of a quick overview. Does, does that answer your question, Leanne? Um, I think so. <laughs> I think so. So, so Jason, I see those boxes sitting behind you. What is that? Uh, yes. So, uh, these are compartment boxes. It's one of the, uh, wide variety of storage solutions that we have for customers, uh, to help maintain their inventory. Uh, these compartment boxes are um, a nice fit for storerooms or electrical shops. Um, you can neatly organize a lot of little components, and it's um, something that we have in a lot of our VMI programs. Um, and these, as an example today, because um, we do have, you know, a lot of offerings, a lot of different products we can put in there, but then you can also go and, and go up to it and scan the QR code, go directly to our website, which uh, also includes our e-store in case there's products that you need to order right off of there. Jason, so, so when you say a lot of little parts, you're talking like terminals and state guns and things like that go in there and cable ties. Is that the kind of stuff you put in those? Yep, sure enough. Uh, we also include uh, fuses, push buttons, um, fasteners. Um, there's a there's a very large assortment of products that can go in these. And uh, what's nice about them is that them being compact and stackable, they don't take up a lot of space in a shop area or a storeroom area. Plus, if you need to take a whole bin out to a job floor, you know, to work on a project, you can do that and then bring it back. That's an excellent idea. I, we, we don't use that, that storage solution in Ohio, but I think we'll try to push that a little bit more. That's a, that's a great thing. It's very common in our, our competition in the faster world to use that storage solution. So the, the people, on the, people on the video may recognize that very easily because we see it a lot out there, right? Yeah, it's great for the red, blue, yellow forks and rings, both yeah. places. Um, we've got lists that, or we can tailor it to whatever the maintenance team needs. We've got um, heat shrinkable solutions for the food and bev industry. We can, you know, heat, uh, metal detectable ties. We can put those in there. Uh, class CC fuses, glass fuses, motor termination kits, things like that. Yeah. I never thought about taking one out to the taking a drawer out and taking it out, you know, to the where you're working on something. That's a great idea. So, Shannon, how does I mean, I would think that, you know, using one of those boxes um, would really help customers um, with their cash flow and also just, you know, how does how does the cap team and how does that help a customer just in general manage manage their their profits? Um, well, it works really well with OEMs and panel shops. If we can get their uh, inventory forecast and look at usage reports, uh, we'll create min max levels based on those reports for you know biweekly or monthly usage. Um, we know have our specialists are in there weekly, kind of eliminate those bulk buys, just buy less more often, you know, and it. It'll smooth that cash flow out. Um, in the industrial facilities, you know, we run into, they might have an existing VMI program with hardware crammed into the bins, falling out on the floor, stuff that hadn't really been used for, you know, years in some cases. Um, hundreds of fuses in the bins that uh, don't match what the what's out on the plant floor. So uh, we can come in and audit the storeroom and create those realistic min maxes and eliminate that wasteful spending as well. Randy, does that help with how the the um, supply chain issues that we're seeing today in the market? Yeah, absolutely. Um, due to the ongoing supply chain issues we've seen over the past months, and really you can say years, um, we've had customers that have been concerned about um, running out of certain items and storage solutions like that leaves the flexibility to adjust levels as needed. We use the visibility we have with our suppliers um, to see where there are issues. 
and adjust um, not only the levels for the customer, but our backup inventory in our warehouses. Um, that's a very important piece of it. Um, and we also have the option of um, using alternates, direct crosses where necessary, um, use items that are available, readily available in the supply chain system. I, in that question, I know uh, in the Northern region, Ohio and Michigan, we've really been able to save some people some really big heartache by managing the inventory for them and having what they need when they need it. I mean, this is a really opportune time to let somebody else help you with their inventory because of those supply chain issues. Because, you know, if we do our job right, we can keep your plan up and running, you know, and you're not going to be down, or at least we're going to make sure you have a better chance of staying up and running. Shannon, you and I just worked on a case study. Um, it actually went live today on, on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that it falls right in line with what we're talking about um, as far as, as helping customers streamline what they carry. Can you talk a little bit about um, that project that you worked on with the customer? Yeah. Um... Buck Thomas, one of our account managers down in the LaGrange, Georgia location, um, had a pharmaceutical manufacturer down that way that um, they were just having issues with their push buttons in their plant. Um, storeroom was uh, in disarray as far as that went. I mean, they had three to four different manufacturers with the same type push button. Um, parts had been robbed off of the push buttons. You know, I get it at two o'clock in the morning. The machine is down. You're going to do what you got to do to get that, get that part, whether you're robbing it or just pulling it right off the shelf. But anyway, we went into the facility and identified all the push buttons, selector switches, uh, pilot lights, and we uh, broke those down and went back to the office. Broke those down into components. So we broke those down into components, and once we did that, we converted everything in over to the Rockwell 800F series push button. Uh, lens operators, bezels, contact blocks, but now it gives them the ability to either build a complete push button or they've got the parts to, you know, to replace if there's just one part that went bad on it. So anyway, um, we once we did that, we created a VMI list. Uh, Chandler, the specialist down there, went down and uh, loaded the bins and we created min maxes for the product and uh, we're managing it weekly now. We've actually looked at their um, other IC controls too. I mean, it's the same scenario. You know, you've got um, overloads that are robbed off of parts, coils robbed out. So anyway, we're working on that for them now and uh, it's going really well. And that's something that uh, we can really help out with, with the vendor managed inventory program is making sure the parts that do have pieces robbed off of them get made whole again um, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we do quite often actually whether it's a push button that even a lens or contact block was removed off of to a liquid type fitting where the the ferrule was taken out for the flex flexible conduit um, and that's that's something that we can definitely help with inventory management making sure you've got the whole product yeah. in your stock yeah, I, one of my favorite things to do on an initial call to a customer is to go up to a bin that looks full and then realize it's only got two parts in it because everything else is a piece of something. And I'll, I'll sit there just talking to the customer, start emptying out the bin right in front of them and then end up with only two parts. And they're like, well, what did you just do? And I said, I just showed you, it looked like you had 20 and here you have two. You know, oh, well, we need way more than that. I'm like, yeah, you need vendor managed inventory. <laughs> How do you think like something like that gets away from from a facility? Does it just happen over time? I say time and need. Uh, somebody said it a minute ago in the middle of the night, I think it was Shannon, that in the middle of the night, a maintenance guy does not care. He'll take whatever he needs a, a part to make a factory run. And then at the end of that process, he's just throwing the remaining parts back in the bin and not really caring about it because he did his job which is one of the things I think I, I love about our job is helping them do their job better, faster, and not necessarily have to look for parts and pieces, but have the real stuff they need in the, in the bin when they're ready to go. So that would be my opinion, time and time and time. And not enough people, 
I mean, I guess right now in the, you know, with the current, you know, hiring issues that everybody has, you know, it's harder and harder to have a person who is also an electrician and an inventory management specialist and all those, you know, they just, they don't have time to do that. They only have time to keep their uh, job running. It's true. Yeah. A lot of times when they bring these machines into their facilities, um, you know, they're buying from different OEMs all together. So they're using one manufacturer, this person's using another. And uh, over time, it just causes problems. And they don't supply, they supply the whole push button. They're not going to supply the components at the OEM level. So they've just got yeah. a material list that they're working off of. Right, the material list can, you know, that's another good thing that we do a lot of times, especially with new lines, is a bill of material from a, an original manufacturer may have all the parts that we stock at a very different price because they're buying them from the OEM instead of from the distributor. So fuses and all those kinds of things, we can help convert that to a much better price and a much better delivery. You know, I've done that with some more stuff from uh, Europe. You know, it might be a busman fuse, but it's coming from Europe if you're buying it through the OEM you know, who built the machine where we have a hundred bucks sitting on the shelf all over the United States. So. And often when they're buying through OEMs, you know, you'll find nine of the same item on the shelf, each yeah. coming from a different OEM. So a lot of times you can consolidate the inventory as exactly. get rid of duplicates. Yeah, which again, saves money. You, know, yeah. you, don't have, you don't need nine of the same thing. And shelf space. And shelf space. So, Mark, we, we talked a lot about vendor managed inventory or inventory management. It's kind of like it's synonymous. They go have in, hand in hand, but our cap team is more than that. Um, I know one of the big things that is also part of that vendor managed in, inventory is the IBEs. Can you um, explain what that is? Because that moves really into the higher level industrial stuff that we do. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So IBEs kind of used, and in some regions, they kind of stand alone, but it basically, it, it, what it's really turned into for us on the VMI side is making sure the critical spares are there when you need them. So an IBE, we go through every panel in your plant and write down every single part that's repairable typically, but we can do them even all the way down to fuses if that's required. Then we go through the storeroom and compare your stocking levels to your installed base. And then all of a sudden we know if you're, you're going to have a problem or not. So let's say you have 10 of a certain drive installed on your on your lines and you have not do not have a spare. Well, then we're going to say, OK, you need to get a spare in here right now because this is something that could fail. Um, so the critical spares are, are really. As we all know, because of the supply chain right now are crucial to the success of keeping the plant running. So that's one of the first things that the IB does is get you the critical spares and the knowledge of it. The other thing it does is, you know, and if you're on this call and you work in a plant, we have found over the last two or three years, surprisingly, how much old, we're surprised how much old technology is still out there. You know, people are using 1970s and 1980s technology in 2022, and they don't have the time or the knowledge to upgrade or modernize their lines. So what we're able to do then is take that information and say to the customer, you know, this line that makes, we'll say salad dressing, is completely full of obsolete control parts. You can't buy these from a distributor. You have to buy them on the internet somewhere. And you're at tremendous risk if you don't figure out a way to, op to optimize this, organize this inventory, and then modernize this inventory. So we don't just make suggestions when we get done with an ID, we come back with solutions. This is what you could do. This is a, a drive to replace an old drive. This is how we would replace this. We get a bunch of engineers involved. And then we also at the end give you this really cool readout that Rockwell prepares that lets you go to management and say, we have to do something in line one. It's all red, it's all obsolete. We are at great risk of line one going down at any day now and then we're gonna have trouble. And then they can get some funding they need to move forward. Mark, I think we should have started with, and cause we all do this. So an IBE is an installed base evaluation that is done by our supplier partner, Rockwell Automation, and we come uh, in. Nope, and so I think we that actually do them. Well, we do them with, their, right. with them. And so I think that it's important that we 
Yeah. We say that so people understand that it's not just pieces and parts, it's the whole line, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we we create a hierarchy so we know where the where the part is, what it does, you know, and then you can go back on the, the data. Rockwell scrubs the data down for us uh, and then you know puts meantime failure information in there, life cycle information, all kinds of uh, information comes back in the data that Rockwell scrubs. So yeah, that's a partnership with Rockwell. Good point, Leanne, thank you. And then not only are we talking about the pieces and parts with that, right? But we are able to provide um, what happens if something, if, if a line does go down, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, forget, I, I just lost the name of it. It's, I, <laughs> when the line goes down? Yeah. Um, it's, um, I, I lost it. I'll look yeah, it up. I mean, that's that's part of it. It's just the, the idea that you know you have a partner who's who knows what you have, what's installed, what you have in stock, who's looked at your data, and and knows if we have it or don't have it, or and you can make suggestions on where to get it. You know, we we just have access to so much more information when after an IDE, and we're just a better partner. You know, because we have the data as well. And so what I was thinking was the block of time. So on that IBE. They can they can also a customer can purchase a block of time, um, so that it's all up front. Sure. And, and that and then they don't have to. It's not an emergency where you're yeah. looking for budgeting somewhere else. Correct. Yeah. Rockwell has all kinds of services like that where you could you know have already ready to go engineers that are going to come on site and help you with things and or our engineers. Yeah. There's a lot in the services side of Rockwell that this data helps them as well. So that they can be on site and uh, quickly and help you get back up and running. Another nice okay, thing. So we about have, IBE, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say another nice thing about an IBE, uh, like Mark had said, is that you know you see what's installed out on the plant floor, and what critical spares you might be missing, so that you can get those you know put into an inventory management program. Mm -hmm. But then also you're evaluating what's currently in the storeroom or spares that are left over, maybe there for equipment that's no longer installed out in the plant and they're just holding on to spare parts that don't need to be kept anymore. Uh, right. I've certainly seen that before and you can you know, identify those and say these can be removed. Uh, you no longer have the equipment out in the, in the field. Yeah, that's exactly right. We, we've, we've been surprised a lot of times the amount of material that you remove is a considerable uh, tax burden that you don't even think about. You're paying taxes on this stuff. It's in your inventory system. That line has been out of your plant for five years, you know, and you just keep it because the maintenance guys, well, we might need it one day. Well, you, you don't. There's nobody running that part anymore on, in your plant. Excellent point, Jason. That's, yeah, it, you get space. Almost every ID gives you space back, you know, which is a premium. You know, like we kind of talked earlier, people don't have a lot of space. Sorry. So we have we have two questions in the comments, you guys. Um, the first question, uh, I want each of you to answer it because I suspect it may be different in every region. Um, so the question is, what trends are you seeing within the VMI world? Randy, let's start with you. Um, I'm seeing more and more that people want more inventory under the VMI program. Um, they're pushing more and more of their inventory over, especially when they have success with what we're already doing. They just push more of it over to the VMI and let us um, um, control the levels. Shannon? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the same things as Brandy is. Um, it's mostly... Um, they're ramping up their inventory. They're getting busier and busier and have less and less employees on staff. And uh, we're having to change our min maxes daily to keep up with uh, the supply chain issues right now. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, the same kind of things, but we're also seeing, uh, I'm seeing a lot more customers who want to know what we're doing in the background, kind of like what we talked about briefly on the SRX thing. What's really happening, you know, in, the, in my VMI? Um, but I also see a lot of the, the workforce shortages, which then we really can help with because they don't have to hire somebody to do that job. We do it for them. Jason. Um, similar to what Mark had said there, I've, I've seen a lot of customers embracing uh, the SRX platform, the improvements that we made to our processes and 
really engaging in the customer portal aspect, being able to view their own inventory, view what's currently on order uh, as it pertains specifically to their VMI, um, in addition to eStore where you can view everything that's on order uh, for a customer. But um, that's uh, something that has been a big improvement in our program and customers are, are, are really um, getting engaged with it. And then the next question, Mark, is gonna be for you. Um, it comes from someone in a customer or someone in Ohio and they wanna know if we can support more, a more remote location. Uh, yeah, so that's our, and that goes along with the software. We have uh, decided that um, we are not necessarily border restricted anymore, with the exception of Rockwell, which has APRs and rules about where you can sell. But uh, we have a lot of customers that are further away than people would imagine in Ohio. We go to Kentucky, go to Pittsburgh, we go to Cincinnati and Cleveland, uh, Indianapolis. You know, we've got we ended up going to a lot of different places, and part of that is using the software. So if it's far away, we, I have a customer I'm discussing going to Arizona with right now, um, once a month. You know, if, the, if we can use the software and we can use shipping in order to move inventory and then we go organize it however often, uh, yeah, it's very possible to go outside of our traditional space. And we've been doing it a lot in the last couple of years. And I think in the other regions, they've been doing it as well, kind of drifting, you know, you know a little bit further away from home, so. Has to be the right customer, the right product mix. You know, it's certainly a, a look at profitability that says, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, you know, I talk about this a lot when we talk about repairs, and Bob and the team will say, yeah, we can do that. You know, we, literally, we can. We just need to talk it through and make sure, you know, it makes sense financially for both of us. But yeah, we can, we can do some crazy things. It's a custom solution, like I said. You know, talk to us. I just dropped. Um, I, 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 I just dropped our. Um, yeah, uh, email address in the chat box. So if uh, if you want to send us an email um, with your contact information, and then I can pass that along to Mark. We can get back in touch with you and 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 see if there's a way to help. Absolutely. Um. Okay. Uh. So Jason, I I think you kind of touched on this a little bit. Um. What What about mobile? Or mobile storerooms. I know you do those a lot down in the coastal south region. Uh, yes. So another one of the inventory storage solution options we have is is a mobile storeroom. It's on a much much larger scale. Uh, these are um, forty foot long shipping containers that have been um, upgraded and equipped with uh, shelving built in them. Um, normally lighting uh, it's all ready to be delivered on site to a customer and just connected to power and it's good to go as a as a mobile storeroom there's an example of one of ours there um, it's a great solution for customers with uh, growing inventory needs that don't necessarily have the building space to secure it and so we've had customers utilize these for planned outages, um, shop inventories, project staging areas. Uh, they've been very useful for you know customers in those types of situations. And it's just another way that we are flexible with how we can help manage inventory. And, and I. We have one of these in each region, you guys. One of the Connex trailers. Meaning that we own or that we, well, we, we, we can do this everywhere. everywhere, right? Mark, you rent them. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, we rent them and then drop them, have them dropped on site. We haven't actually purchased one, the, you know, super fancy one like Jason. We don't have his budget. Um, <laughs> you know, so we're just leasing them. But again, it's like Jason said super custom solutions. I mean, what do you need? You know, because we have Connex boxes, we have carts, we have shelves, we have, you know, all kinds of stuff that we can talk about that helps you manage your inventory or store your inventory or, you know, or, or find a way to 
make it easier for you to get to it. Randy, you have one in Coastal North, is that we've right? Got, we've got two or three and um, we've even insulated and climate controlled them. So if you have situations where, you know, if you're going to put someone in there, you certainly want to climate control it. But if you have sensitive inventory, um, like electronics, you can climate control them and we have done that. Nice. Better budget. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask Jason about that, but being in Southern Coastal, it's like a temperate zone. He probably doesn't need to do that. Just, just northern quit. <laughs> in Northern Coastal, it gets a little colder in the winter, doesn't it? <laughs> a little. <laughs> a little. Uh, Mark, you kind of alluded a little bit before I stopped sharing my screen to um, the uh, job carts. I, yeah. I have a picture of one of these here. Oh, yeah. You yeah, that's that's a that's a great picture of one of our job carts built to be a contractor cart. If you can kind of see that, so like Jason's Connex boxes, we do the same thing all the way down to the small scale and all the way up to the large scale. Um, you know, we have Connex boxes a lot in the very beginning with all the ground PVC and stuff and all the things that are going to the bigger stuff that's going to go into ground. Then as the, as they put walls up and get inside, we start to then change over to carts sometimes where. The contractor can roll this cart around and do the rough in and the wiring inside and run the conduit. Um, yeah, these are we've had the we got the we get these. We have a couple other carts, you know, the more what we'll say we use in OEMs when you're building machines that may be just full of cord sets, the things that you would put on a machine specifically, or in this case, a contractor cart that would allow you to put in what you want. But we have them lockable and unlockable and all kinds of ways to manage the inventory. Um, we love them on wheels because, you know, at different parts, you know, we did in a couple of apartment buildings. So, you know, they start on one end of the, of the apartment complex and move to the next end. And then every, we go in once a week, once they're done and fill it back up and they drag it down the hall and get ready to the next apartment. You know, it just kind of keeps guys from running to the hardware store and running to Home Depot and Lowe's and all those places and keeps them wiring things instead of, for, you know, disappearing. How are you managing those carts? We do it a couple different ways. You know, some are in SRX and they use checkout software to remove it to a job, let's say in a factory. But in a um, contractor cart, it's like this one, it would be more just we go in however often and just kind of make sure they have what they need. Talk to the job foreman, see what's coming up. You know, what are they using a lot of? What aren't they using a lot of? And then and then we switch over this. Let's say this looks like more like a rough end cart. We switch over to a finish cart. You know, that's going to have you know cover plates and switches and all that kind of stuff in it so they can you know do that finish work and, and get the heck out so yeah we just show up do what we do that's great Did I answer your question shannon or was that too vague no that answered my question jen i got a question where, where do you get that haircut i mean that's a <laughs> it's an expensive haircut <laughs> <laughs> Cost me about three hundred dollars a month to keep it up. Wow, <laughs> that's just a high price. <laughs> Randy, so you you kind of you kind of alluded to this. Mark did. I think everybody has about um, custom solutions. I mean, you talked about that with the climate control in the in the uh, storeroom, a uh, mobile storeroom. But how is how is CAP VMI truly a custom solution? Um, our approach to inventory solutions for our customers is definitely not one size fits all because what works for one customer certainly may not work for another. Um, most of the time we have to use a custom approach to accommodate our customers' needs um, using our tools. And, and as Mark alluded to earlier, you know, we've, we've got a vast array of experience um, in our CAP system. Um, you're not just relying on a cookie cutter solution or just one person's approach. You know, we've got that network of, of experienced people across our regions, you know, some of which are you know present here right now. Um, and we can tap in to customize a solution um, using the various tools and methods discussed here today. Um, it seems like, you know, always it's different each time on an approach and you just, you've got to accommodate what the customer needs. That's what's most important. Yeah, well, and again, if I can jump in on there, one of the fun parts of doing our first initial call is finding out really what's happening at the customer. Where's your pain points? What's, you know, what is it that you need help with? How can we, you know, make your job easier? And then asking a lot of questions so that we can then focus in on that solution and help them find it. 
And then this this group, we have a big, I will say, brain trust. A lot of guys that have a lot of experience. So we'll call each other and we'll talk about these different solutions that people have. And we try to meet every year or so and kind of talk about, you know, what's going on in each region. So yeah, I mean, the knowledge that we have, you know, we all retire. Jason will be all by himself, but the rest of us will just be living the the sweet life. Um, and then it'll all be Jason's. But yeah, right now we have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. Hopefully not all mine. <laughs> it will someday, brother. You can hire me as a consultant, Jason. I'm <laughs> in too. I'm in. I'm Sounds in as a consultant. <laughs> Jason, why are you never retiring? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's super young compared to us, a little bit older gentleman. That's why I want to know. You poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, we're just about out of time, you guys. Um, but if we didn't get to a question that you had to um, plead while you're watching, um, or if you're watching us on a recording, please feel free to reach out to us at Mac and Mac live at mc mc.com. Uh, you can also find that email address in the video description below. I want to say thank you to our panelists today, Mark Graham, Jason Weed, Shannon Betts, and Randy Langdon. Uh, you've given us a lot of information, and um, I think I know I learned more about our CAP team today, and I hope everyone else did too. Uh, if you're watching us and you haven't already subscribed to the McNaught McKay YouTube channel, please do so. Um, we have lots of industry content out there just like this. Uh, we will um, see you again in December um, for our next and final topic of our industry expert uh, exchange, which will be our, um, our digital procurement. Uh, and that's all of our email, our our web, our web store, and um, electronic data uh, that we can help you with. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a a great day and um, and happy Thanksgiving. It'll be uh, here before we know it. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.